Every year, thousands of students, apprentices and trainees enter a workshop environment for the first time. Even those who have been using tools for many years may not be aware of how to use them safely. In this program, we'll look at the possible dangers in a workshop that present themselves on a day-to-day -day basis and find out what to do to make your workspace safe. We'll also hear from experts in the field who have forged a career in woodworking and know a thing or two about staying safe on the job. Power saws, drills, sanders, glue guns, nail guns, chisels and tools all whizzing by at thousands of reps per minute, razor sharp blades, drills twisting at high speed, mallets and hammers hitting down with blunt force. It doesn't take much imagination to see how the everyday environment of a workshop can be an accident waiting to happen. Every year, hundreds of workers are injured in workplace accidents and around the world over 2,000 people are killed. The sad truth is that most of these accidents can be prevented, greatly reducing the number of injuries and deaths each year. In a workshop or woodworking environment, safety measures can be as simple as having the right safety equipment and using it correctly. The first and most important rule of woodworking is to wear appropriate safety equipment. If you develop the habit of wearing it from the start, you'll never want to work without them. The first things you want to protect are your eyes. When using drills and sanders, wooden debris will constantly be flicked up towards your face, often at high speeds. The most effective protection from flying wood chips and debris are safety glasses. There are many styles of safety glasses, but they should all share the same features, mainly impact resistant lenses and side screen to protect against anything that might otherwise get in your eye and cause problems. The other option is to use a full face shield, which are comfortable and can be flipped up when not needed. Eye injury can lead to reduced vision and even blindness so getting used to wearing proper safety glasses is well worth it. When working with loud machinery or power tools, you should always wear some form of hearing protection. When it comes to protecting your hearing, there are two common types of noise reduction wear available. Small expandable earplugs and headphone style earmuffs. Damage to your hearing is irreversible and working in a loud environment on a daily basis will affect your hearing if safety gear isn't used. Hearing loss is a gradual process, so you won't notice it until it's too late. Consistent use of ear protection will help protect you from hearing loss and stop you from damaging your ears permanently. As well as noise and debris, the other major hazard you might not think about is the large amount of dust generated from the use of sanders and routers. These fine particles can enter your lungs causing long-term respiratory problems. To protect yourself from this, it's always a good idea to wear a face mask. If you're using varnish or paint, a respirator is a better choice to protect against the harmful effects of chemicals. Apart from these protectors, you should always wear proper clothing when working with power tools. Never wear loose fitting clothing. Loose articles of clothing can easily become entangled in a power tool and are extremely dangerous. Instead, Wear tight but comfortable long sleeve shirts and pants, as well as steel toed work boots to protect your feet. A shop apron is advisable when using equipment such as a lathe, and if you have long hair, ensure it's tied back and tucked into your collar. By taking a few simple precautions and wearing the right kind of safety gear, you can protect yourself from long term health problems and prevent injury from occurring in the workshop. In the workshop, your most important space is your work area. It's where you do your job and where most accidents usually occur. To ensure your work area is safe, the first thing you need to do is to keep it clean and free from any clutter that may cause problems. A workplace cleanliness is almost as important as safety equipment. Uh, a workplace, an untidy workplace could uh, cause people to trip and fall, not only onto the floor but onto benches, woodworking tools and even dangerous woodworking machines. When they're not being used, make sure your tools are put away back into storage. This will help not only reduce clutter 
but also give you some peace of mind next time you go to use them. One of the reasons why tools must be put away after use would obviously be to uh, keep them safe, but also uh, tools that are put away are normally checked, uh, placed in a uh, proper uh, place, and, and that way you know that the next time you pick that tool up, it's going to be in a good working order. Floor areas should also be kept clean, free from sawdust, debris and stretched power cords. Anything that could cause you to slip or trip must be moved. Floors are very important. Uh, quite often when you're working in a woodworking shop or any other workshop for that matter, you're concentrating on the job at hand and you might not be looking down at the floor at all times, so uh, a, a trip could normally result in quite a, uh, quite a significant injury. When working with extension cords and cables, ensure they're not overstretched at any point. Extension cords are tested regularly. When they're tested, they're tagged so that people know that they're safe. If you were to take an extension cord and wrap it around your arm, resulting in twists and bends, then that causes a situ situation where it, it may damage the, the, the fibres, uh, the, the cables inside of the actual power cord. A damaged power cord can cause an electrical hazard, resulting in power surges, fire and possibly electrocution. So make sure they're checked regularly. The other possible cause of fire is misuse of flammable liquids. This includes having them close to a source of ignition and in a woodwork shop, a fire is the last thing you want to occur. Flammable liquids are very dangerous. Even a small spark could uh, create an explosion. So flammable liquids should always be stored in a flammable container. It's normally a flammable cupboard and it's purchased specifically for that reason. A locked flammables cupboard is a good investment for any workshop. Even if only a small amount of flammable liquid is used or kept on the premises, it can still cause a lot of damage if mishandled or put in the wrong place at the wrong time. Another precaution to put into place is to have safety zones clearly marked on the floor informing people they shouldn't enter certain areas at certain times. Safety zones marked on the floor are quite important because quite often you have people who aren't normally working in the factory come in to have a look around and you need to be sure that they're not walking amongst machinery and tools and, and that sort of thing. Every workspace is different. And if you can see any areas that are dangerous or could use improvement, speak to your boss or occupational health and safety representative about what can be done to fix it. Just because you're new to a job, don't feel like you have to be quiet about safety. You could bring a fresh perspective and notice problems that others don't. In the end, your safety is everyone's safety. There are a variety of different hand tools you will commonly use in the workshop, and although they're not as inherently dangerous as power tools, if they're not used in the correct manner, they can cause serious injury. Let's take a look at some different hand tools and the correct ways to use them. First up, we have the tenon saw, a multi-purpose tool used traditionally to cut tenons, but used for all kinds of general cuts on the bench. The saw blade must always be 100% sharp so it cuts easily and safely. So it's important to get a really good firm grip on what the actual piece of material you're cutting. So the last thing you want is the material moving around. So we've got this supported in here with a bench hook. So we can start the cut at the very back there and gradually we just draw it across the wood, bringing it down on the work, introducing the full blade to the work. Next, we have the jack plane. Another common tool used for multi-purpose planing. They come in a few different sizes, and once again, the sharper the blade, the less force you have to use, so the safer it is. It's important to get your whole body weight behind the, behind the actual plane. Pushing at arm's length is not going to have the desired effect, so knees nice and bent. We put pressure down at the start of the plane, and then put pressure to the back of the plane when we're finished, and we get a nice, even shaving. Next, we have a bevel chisel, which is used to pare away unwanted material from pieces of timber. Once again, the tip needs to be razor sharp for an accurate cut. So the golden rule is to have two hands on the chisel, either in a pairing action like so. So again, we're putting all our body weight behind it, so we're in full control. You're not exerting a lot of pressure on there. 
our hands are nice and safe. So the last scenario we want to get into is putting our hand in the way of the cut. So the rule is if you've got one hand on the mallet and one hand on the chisel, then we're pretty safe to go. As well as mallets, hammers are commonly found in the workshop and can also cause injury if not used properly. The main safety um, features on here are to make sure that the actual striking part of the hammer is kept nice and clean. Now if that builds up, if we get a grease build up, then it can cause problems with the nail actually skidding off the, the uh, foot of the hammer. So we can actually just rough that up on some sandpaper and that just scores up the surface and helps the actual where it strikes the nail, stops it slipping off. So again, make sure you hold it right at the end. So holding it down here minimalizes the amount of leverage you can get. So right at the end, obviously keeping your fingers as well clear as you can, little strikes to get it going, and then some long strikes from the wrist just to nail it all the way. To mark parallel lines and hand joints, a marking gauge is used. The marker itself needs to be kept nice and sharp for use. We can lock it in position there and it runs down the edge of the material to draw a parallel line to the surface and just to make that a little bit clearer we can just fill that in with some grey lead so it marks a really nice accurate parallel line down the edge of the material so really useful for repetition and any job that needs that accuracy to it. Coping saws are another common hand tool used in workshops because of their sharp, brittle blades. Care has to be taken to ensure they're used properly. We can see the teeth on the blade here. They're all facing forward, so as we push the saw blade, as we push the saw forward, it makes the cut. Now these blades are very, very fragile, so you have to be very careful when we're using them, but um, they are disposable, so they just get thrown out when they're broke. Hand tools are often overlooked when it comes to safety in the workshop but they can present some very real dangers. Care must be taken to ensure they're used properly to prevent injury.